Hi everybody, it's Tatiana and today I have a book haul and unboxing that I am going to do and I said a little while ago, maybe around February or March, that I was not planning to do any videos that were just book hauls or unboxings because I didn't want that to be a focus of my channel. So recently for the little few book hauls I've had, I have been putting them on the end of review videos or wrap-up videos. However, this is a pretty hefty haul and so I did not want to extend a wrap-up or review longer than need be considering that my June wrap-up was almost 20 minutes long. So I wanted to come on and do this one separately and this will probably be my last book haul for quite some time uh, for purchase books I may have library hauls because there are books that I am looking forward to reading that are coming out later in the year however the library needs to be my bay at this point getting on with the book haul the first books few books that I have that are not boxed were all purchased from Dollar Tree starting with a Star Shall Fall by Marie Brennan. Uh, the tagline says, Science is King, but Magic is Queen. This was strictly a cover buy because there is a badass fiery dragon at the top, and then there is a city on fire and what looks like either a cathedral or a citadel of some, some sort with that the fire is surrounding at the bottom. And so I picked it up just looking at the cover, and I was like, for a dollar, even if I hate it, it's a dollar. Uh, but this is the synopsis of the story. The Royal Society of London plays home to the greatest minds of Britain. In the century since it was founded in 1660, the society was, has revolutionized philosophy and scientific knowledge. Its fellows map out the laws of the natural world, disproving ancient superstition and ushering in an age of enlightenment. To the immortal fate of the Onyx Court, living in a secret city below London, these scientific developments are less than welcome. Magic is losing its place in the world, and science threatens to expose the phase home to hostile eyes. In 1666, a great fire burned four-fifths of London to the ground. The calamity was caused by a great dragon, an elemental beast of flame. Incapable of destroying something so powerful, the Fae of London banished it to a comet just moments before the comet's light disappeared from the sky. However, Sir Edmund Haley's calculations have predicted the comet's return. So begins the phase race against time. Soon the dragon's gaze will fall upon London and it will return to the city it ravaged once before. The phase will have to answer the question that defeated them a century ago. How can they kill a being more powerful than all their magic combined? It will take both magic and science to save London, but reconciling the two carries its own danger. So that sounded great once I read it. It's some historical fiction, some fa fantasy elements. So yes, I really look forward to reading this, hopefully soon. I also got Forever Soul Ties with by Vanessa Davis Griggs, and this is an author that I have been wanting to read for quite some time and just haven't picked her up, and so I figured for a dollar, why not? Uh, the synopsis on this, uh, I believe she is a Christian fiction or faith fiction writer. So let's see. It started innocently, a coincidental meeting between old high school friends, first loves, at Butterfly's Business, the painted lady flower shop. Then came lunch, then confessions of unhappy marriages, loneliness. It went on this way for years between Butterfly and Ethan. That's how they built the soul tie. The bond that, despite their devotion to God, has now led to adultery. And as all things done in secret, they've been found out. Well, Butterfly has. As a leader in her church, Butterfly is suddenly cast into the spotlight, but she soon realizes she's being used as a pawn to bring down a new pastor, a young man who is upsetting tradition by preaching about real-life issues real people deal with, people like Butterfly. And as she faces a challenging search for the truth, Forgiveness and the meaning, the real meaning of love, she may finally break out of her cocoon. So it is a Christian fiction novel, and 
I have heard a lot about some of her other books. I hadn't heard anything about this, but from some of the groups that I participate in on Facebook, I have heard good things about her novels. So I've been wanting to check her out for a while, so I went ahead and picked this one up. I also got The River of No Return by B. Ridgeway. This is actually what started my Dollar Tree book buying search because I went one one weekend and while I was waiting for my mom and I went together and while I was waiting for her to check out, I saw this in the front of the, of the store and it grabbed my attention because blue is my favorite color and I thought that the cover was pretty and so I went ahead and picked it up to read the synopsis and in reading the synopsis I thought that it sounded really good but I wasn't sure if I wanted to read it just because it would have been a book with blue to have on my bookshelf. But so I went back again to reread the synopsis and it still sounded good even taking all of the gorgeous blue out of consideration. Two hundred years after he was about to die on a Napoleonic battlefield Lord Nicholas Falcott wakes up in a hospital bed in 21st century London. The Guild, a secretive fraternity for time travelers, helps him make a new life in the modern world. They tell him that there is no return, but Nick yearns for home, and for one beautiful woman in particular, now lost to history. Back in 1815, that very woman, Julia Percy, finds herself the guardian of a family secret inherited from her enigmatic grandfather, How to Manipulate Time. But there are those who seek to possess Julia's power, and she begins to realize she is in the gravest peril. The guild's rules are made to be broken, and Nick discovers how to travel back to the 19th century and his ancestral home. Fate and the frame fabric of time draw Nick and Julia together once again. Soon enough, they are caught up in an adventure that pulls, puts the future into their hands. Love endures the gulf of centuries, and so does danger. As gripping as it is evocative and fast-paced, The River of No Return is a tale of lovers who match wits and gamble with their hearts against the rules of time itself. So, yeah, I really look forward to reading this. I, it's, it, it's, it sounds so good. So, yeah, and it's, it's a whopper of a hardcover book uh, for a dollar. So, you can't beat that. And... The last book I purchased in my Dollar Tree haul uh, is The Scar by Sergei and Marina Diachenko. Diachenko? Diachenko, however you say their last name. Eggert is a brash, confident member of the elite guards and an egotistical philanderer. After he kills an innocent student in a duel, a mysterious man known as the Wanderer challenges Eggert and then slashes his face with his sword leaving Eggert with a scar and a curse, the torment of cowardice. Humiliated, the object of scorn and derision, Eggert is thrown out of the guard and flees to a far-off city, unable to end his suffering by his own hand, yet unwilling to live his life in fear and self-loathing. Eggert embarks on an odyssey to undo the curse. He will have to confront the horrible damage he has caused, attempting to make amends for a past full of misdeeds by, plant, by taking a journey down a long and harrowing path, plotted with the sureness of Robin Hobb and colored with the eerie and ominous imagination of Michael Moorcock. The Scar tells a story that cannot be forgotten. So that also sounded very interesting when I read the synopsis of it, so I went ahead and picked it up again. It's a dollar. And for a dollar, I have purchased two hardback books and two paperback books. So that's a huge discount. Four dollars. For almost a hundred dollars worth of books. Huge discount. If you have not checked out your Dollar Tree for books, check them out. They have quite a wide variety of books and I was completely shocked so yeah check them out don't sleep on Dollar Tree the rest of the books that are in this haul are books that are all, were all purchased from Amazon or the Amazon marketplace so there are books that I know what they're about so I won't have to read the synopsis I won't feel like I need to read the synopsis to you I uh, yeah I, I, I know what they're about and they're books that I have been waiting on for quite some time. Not to receive them after being ordered, but just waited to purchase them because I was waiting for the final two that were 
released on June 30th. So, I'm so excited. I believe I know what this box is. I think this one is from an Amazon seller, which actually got here a lot faster than I expected it to. Let's see. 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 Let's see
the family friend used to be a librarian for one of the public school systems in my city and she went to VEA over the summer and she got winch and she got it signed for me because she knows that I like historical fiction and so she thought that it would appeal to me and I really did enjoy winch I actually want to read it again but this is huh bomb look at this cover just this is gorgeous and it's not just because it's blue I promise just it's not just because the dress is blue <laughs> but this is absolutely gorgeous this follows the story of three characters two females and one man as they are moving on with their lives new chapters at the end of the Civil War and they're moving to different cities and uh, trying to begin these new lives but in order to be able to live their lives fully they have to come to terms with some of the things from their past that they have not been able to resolve or reconcile and so it's their journey as they are doing this in this post-Civil War time frame. And I am just really, really looking forward to reading this. That's why I bought it. But I swear, this is going to be like a showpiece on my bookcase. I am in love with this cover. Absolutely in love with the cover. I also have Volume 6 in the Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 8 graphic novel series. So the only one that I'm waiting on still is Volume 7. Uh, but Volume 6 is Retreat. Oh, then I have Invasion of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. I wanted to get this when it initially came out. However, there were so many other books. All of these books I have been putting on my in my shopping cart and just waiting for Sand Your Ground and Shadow Shaper to be released to have been released so that I could pay for everything and get it all shipped. So this has been sitting in my shopping cart on Amazon for quite some time. But this is Invasion of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. I have not read the first book yet. I do plan to read it soon. And I will just do them both back to back. But one of my main concerns, because if you remember when I showed or did the haul, I don't know if I did the haul or if I posted it on Instagram, when I purchased Queen of the Tearling last year, the reason why I purchased it was one, because the cover was gorgeous, and two, when I picked it up, it felt like butter, and this feels exactly the same. I was really, really hoping that the cover would feel the same. The art is not the same, I'm, and I'm assuming that the change in the art has to do with the story, but the art does not look the same, but the cover feels the same and it's got most of these books have deckled edges um so most of the hardback books have deckled edges I don't think Shadow Shadow Shaper does not but Bomb and Invasion of the Tearling and The Scar all have deckled edges interesting and lastly I purchased The 52nd by Dela Dila, I don't know if that's, I don't know how you say the author's name, but this is another book that I purchased because I saw it on the Book Riot channel. It came in, it was one of the in the mail bag videos, and it, the cover I love. Absolutely love the cover. Um, and this is paperback. Uh, but I absolutely love the cover. And then when she talked about it, she gave the synopsis of it. I, I just, I, it was sounded weird enough for me. <laughs> and this is the story of an immortal family called the Castillo family who carry on a long thought dead tradition of har harvesting, selecting, uh, kidnapping, and sacrificing 52 people to the underworld every 52 years, which is supposed to be part of their Mayan and Aztec culture that people have believed to be long dead and one of the persons who are sent out to collect slash kidnap Zara is her is that her name yes Zara 
uh, finds, you know, is not able to follow through with what he's supposed to do because he's been dreaming about her for 500 years. And so now there's, now it's this quest to attempt to break this tradition that they have been participating in for hundreds of years. So it is the story about that and that was just like the most shitty synopsis ever. But hearing Rebecca talk about it and give the information and how much she liked it, I look forward to reading it. I'd never heard of it before. I'd never heard of this author before. And so this fit right along with what I was attempting to do with reading some new authors. So yes, certainly look forward to reading this as well. So I have a lot of work to do. A lot of the books that I have purchased as part of this haul, I want to read. I also want to read the books that I got from the Book Riot Summer Surprise Box this summer as well. Especially Stand Your Ground, Shadow Shaper, and Balm. So I will be exceptionally busy when with reading as far as that goes. And I have some audiobooks that I want to read as well. So I have a lot of things, a lot of work to do. But I'm going to go so that those of you who are watching this who have work to do can go do what you need to do as well. And I hope you all have a good week, weekend, whenever you see this video. Peace out.